Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be comparing the same drawing done with three different styles. One using very thick lines, the next one using thin lines, and the final one using no lines at all. And what I'm going to begin uh, doing is uh, putting down a base layer of brown. These are supposed to be taiyaki, a Japanese pastry that's shaped like a fish. Maybe later on I'll, I'll explain why I chose this particular uh, object to, uh, to use as the comparison. But for now, let's go ahead and get started with a base layer of uh, brown watercolor. Alright, so we've got basically the same thing on all three illustrations, and now I'm pulling out my Sharpie, and I am going to <laughs> begin inking, which I don't think I've ever done, or very rarely done in one of my videos before, inking with a Sharpie, because uh, anyone who's used one of these pens uh, knows that they are, you know, the line is extremely thick. But that's the point of uh, this one, and I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, dive in with super thick lines. Now this, uh, in a way, is a style challenge for me. I'm not used to uh, making an illustration with lines this thick, but that's kind of the whole point of this uh, video, is to sort of push myself in new directions and and let all of us see at the end what the what a difference it makes depending on the thickness of line with, you know, more or less the same. Uh, illustration. And one thing that I'm not attempting to do is to uh, vary the uh, width of the line, which I might try to do a little bit over here in my thin line one. Uh, the experiment with this is to really try to do a uh, uniform line width that uh, to me sort of represents a more graphic approach, something that is easily reproducible. You might see it on a t-shirt, you might see it on a big banner. It's designed to be uh, viewed and understood from very far away, or indeed these days with uh, phones and so forth, uh, your illustrations may be <clears throat> greatly reduced in size, right? If it's going to designed to be a little icon on a phone or something like that. You may choose to do your illustration with big thick lines like this so that when it gets shrunk down to, you know, half an inch square or a centimeter square or something like that, that it still um, is readable and understandable. Now, in fact, I'm going to connect all these lines, which is another thing that I wouldn't normally do. Um, I would let it breathe a little, and probably that's what I'll do when I uh, move on to the second one. But uh, we'll consider this the thick, all-connected line approach. And to keep this video a reasonable length, I think I am going to bring in my old friend, Old Man Time Lapse. You don't have to say old two times! I get it! And he's going to help me speed through this uh, first uh, part of the illustration. All right, so you can see the line uh, thickness uh, causes the illustration to look very flat. And I'm going to come in with uh, uh, added watercolor now and begin to maybe try to make it look at least a little more three-dimensional. But um, my f sense is, is that when you've committed to uh, big, thick lines like this, you are sacrificing um, any attempt to make it look, you know, photoreal or extremely uh, 3D. So uh, I'm not going to labor over this too much in terms of adding extra uh, color here, but I thought it did look, it looked extremely flat if we just left it that way. So that's just a little word of explanation. Let me go ahead and finish off adding this sort of simple second layer of uh, shadow uh, brown coloring, and then we will be back and ready to move on to the uh, second version of the illustration. So you can see, um, uh, adding the coloring has given just a slightly more 3D look uh, than it had before, but um, as I said, I think that's about as far as I can take it with those bold, thick lines that just tend to naturally uh, flatten the image no matter what you do. So I'm switching now to a, um, a Micron Pigma 08, and that actually is uh, admittedly still a fairly thick uh, line, but I did want to have the opportunity of showing variation in line thickness. Um, and that's why I opted for this one, because 
when you uh, press down, you can get a, a thicker line, and when you let up, like I'm doing right now, you can get quite a delicate little line. Um, so you sort of think in advance of where you want the shadow to go. Say, I figure the shadow is going to go here, so I might go ahead and press down real hard and give it a nice thick line. Now one of the key differences that I want to do with this one is not to uh, connect every single line uh, together, sort of coloring book style, but to let it breathe a little more. And to me that means letting some of these lines trail off and not have them connect all the way uh, to the, the contour line. So yeah, I wanted to go a little bit beyond simply showing thick line versus thin line, just showing slightly different inking styles. And this one definitely is going to try to let it breathe a little more. And then of course the last one, having no lines at all, is going to be an entirely different um, type of illustration because everything has to be expressed through color. So there you go. I don't want to spend too long on any one of these individual segments, and I do like to keep old man time lapse busy. He definitely does! I never get any days off! And uh, he's going to help me finish off this second version, the inking anyway. Maybe I'll come back and do a little more uh, coloring in just a second. All right, so you can see how I varied the line thickness, especially over here, certain areas, getting um, thicker lines um, in anticipation of creating this uh, shadowing effect where, um, you know, we're going to have the light source coming from the upper left and uh, casting shadows down here on the lower right. And what I find is that when you're doing something with a um, more lightly inked style, then you feel encouraged as a watercolorist, uh, or indeed any type of colorist, uh, to go farther with the uh, coloring, because you've sort of left room for it in the illustration. Um, whereas I said before, when you do the thick line approach, it uh, you're sort of struggling against that thick line if you're trying to make a sort of three-dimensional looking uh, illustration is you're never going to get very far with that approach because of those thick lines that are just basically telling the uh, human eye this is an illustration right um, and uh, to be clear I'm not saying that one of these uh, approaches is better than the other that you know should choose one or the other it, it sort of depends on what you what kind of effect you want and um, as I said, when you uh, anticipate an illustration being shrunk down really small and still needing to be able to uh, convey the basic information of what it is, that thick line uh, approach may indeed be superior. Well, I'm going to go ahead and use the watercolor to finish um, uh, sort of beefing up this illustration in terms of making it look a little more three-dimensional, and then we're going to move on to the final no-lines illustration. So you can see there's uh, quite a difference in terms of how three-dimensional the image looks, but again, it doesn't take much imagination to uh, realize that if you stood very far away from this image, you might not really uh, see uh, its details, whereas this one is going to be clearly visible from all the way across the room. And now it is time to move on to this final version, which is the no lines approach. And one thing that's going to be different uh, as I work on this is before I get into any of the details, I'm actually going to go in with a sort of mid-tone layer uh, to start um, delineating areas of light and shade within uh, this picture. And I think what happens when you're doing a, a no lines approach is that you uh, begin to think in terms of building up layers of color. Uh, and that it would make no sense for me to get into details right now uh, because uh, they, they'd all get washed away as I attempted to add subsequent layers of color on top of them. So you, you begin with this more generalized um, bit of color that you know is not the final work, but somewhere in the middle. And then you can... Uh, yeah, let that dry, but you can see me already starting to head toward <clears throat> linear work. It depends on, you know, just how wet the uh, area is that you've done. 
the degree to which you need to stop and wait and let it uh, dry before you go back into it. Um, this whole area here seems a little overdone to me. I think I'll just sort of bring that all together. But that's the basic uh, approach there and I think what I'll do is to let this dry and come back and maybe do a little more of the detail work um, in just a second. Okay, so I thought I'd zoom in a little uh, tighter so that you can see the details a bit more. And I'm actually using a smaller brush now um, because it is time to start getting into these details and I want a kind of a finer line. In a way, these are the lines, you know, and uh, I chose this uh, image on purpose, this taiyaki, because it has this imprinted design on it that sort of suggests lines and... Um, it sort of uh, allows us to see what happens when the coloring is supplying uh, line work to a degree. Um, and uh, I think inevitably this one is going to be the most realistic looking, um, but I don't think that necessarily means it's the best. Certainly, it's kind of has a sort of eye candy aspect to it when you, when something looks three dimensional and real. But, uh, as I said before, I don't want this to be like, you must choose which is the best. Only one can reign supreme and the other must be banished for all time. Uh, no, that's uh, certainly not uh, what this is all about. You, It's good to have in your arsenal these different uh, techniques, these different approaches, and then uh, different projects will call for different things. So, that gives you sort of the basics of uh, how I would... Um, begin finishing off an illustration that has no final uh, black line work. Um, but this is going to take me a while to finish, so let's go ahead and bring in Old Man Time Lapse one last time. I knew it! I knew you weren't finished with me! And uh, he's going to help me uh, bring this all the way to the end. So you can see you definitely need patience for this, um, you know, no lines approach, especially if you're going to try to go for a sort of three-dimensional look. And uh, I highly recommend working from light to dark. You can see how I, I saved the very darkest brown uh, work until uh, the very end. And I feel actually that I should go back in on some of these previous illustrations uh, and add just a little more uh, so as to make it, you know, a fair comparison. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that real quickly, and then I'm going to refocus so that we can uh, have a look at all three different styles. All right, so there you see all three illustrations. It really is interesting how differently uh, an illustration can turn out depending on how you choose to ink it, uh, or choose not to ink it as the case may be. But let me take a moment to say thank you to anyone who supported me by getting any of my books, like Mastering Manga 1 uh, or 2, or indeed 3, which I don't have on me at the moment. But I do want to show you the two-pencil method and say thanks to anyone uh, who uh, purchased that one as well, my very latest book. Really cannot say thank you enough uh, to those of you who choose to support me by uh, doing that. But let me go ahead and lay down this brush. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.